We're now ready to look at a different parameter that we need to uh, create some new formulas for uh, if we want to measure them to the population. And in fact, another measurement that we most commonly use uh, when we're looking at trying to get information from a population is a population proportion. A population proportion is simply a percentage or a fraction or a decimal um, about a population we're trying to learn about. So for example, if uh, one population parameter is that uh, the population of women in the general population we would say is one half 0.5 or 50 percent. That 50 percent represents a parameter and we represent that population parameter with the letter P. Now of course we don't really know most population parameters. And so the only way what we're left to do really is to guess, um, but to make an educated guess. And the best way to do that is with the sample. If we get a, a proportion that comes from a sample, we call that P hat. So just like we use different symbols uh, to differentiate between uh, sample mean and population mean, we also do the same thing with proportion. So if we take a survey of school teachers, a sample of 135 teachers yields 100 women. Therefore, we would say p hat, based on my sample, is 100 out of 135, or 0.7474.1%. Uh, these, all three of these, the fraction form, the decimal form, and the percentage form, are all population proportions, or I'm sorry, sample proportions in this case with the p hat. So when we, uh, a p hat is only going to give us the results of the 100 people or so that we talked to. The best ways we've looked at throughout this chapter is not to just use a single value, but a range of values uh, to estimate the population number. To do this, we need to calculate the margin of error for proportions. The formula is different when we're dealing with margin of error with proportions. You'll notice first here that we have this ZC value. Uh, this is the Z value for our given level of confidence. It is our critical value. And with proportions, we are only going to be doing that for, we're only going to use Z uh, for our calculations. Then we take and we multiply that by the square root of my sample proportion times 1 minus the sample proportion. Remember the proportion uh, should be a number between uh, one, 0 and 1. And so 1 minus p hat is simply its complement. We divide that by n and then we take the, whole square, uh, the square root of the whole thing. Once we have our margin of error, we simply add it and subtract it from our point estimate p hat, which is our sample proportion. Since we're using z, remember you can use all of those values that are on t table. Uh, here are some of the common ones, 80%, 1.28, 85%, 1.44, 1.645 uh, for 90%, 1.96 for 95%, 2.33, more accurately, that's actually rounded to two decimals. This would be 2.326, and then 2.576 for a 99%. So let's look at an example. A survey of 435 students found that 400 feel there's not enough parking available on campus. Not a surprising number. Find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all university students who think there is not enough parking. Uh, so, just to keep in mind, we have only talked to 435, and so the only real number we have to go on right now is the opinion of those 435 people. Um, and we want to make an estimate for the entire university uh, student population. And so that's where this confidence interval comes into play. We want to be able to best represent what we think is the overall percentage of full university students who think there is not enough parking. 
So first, in this case, we need to figure out what our sample proportion actually was. 400 is not our sample proportion. Those are just the people who said yes uh, out of the 435. And so our proportion is the ratio of those two numbers, 400 over 435, which is 92%. Now, because we're doing a 95% confidence interval, we need to know what critical z-value we're going to use for that. And of course, the z-value for a 95% level of confidence is 1.96. Next, we calculate the margin of error. We have all the information we need at this point. We have our critical value for Z, 1.96. We have our p-hat value, which is 0.92. And we know what 1 minus that is 0.08 when we divide that by N, which is 435. Plugging those suckers in, we get 0 0.025. Just to ease your calculations and trying to put this in your calculator, I recommend instead of going 1 minus 0.92, you just calculate what the complement is in your head. In this case, it would be 8%. Uh, that's just going to make a lot less to enter into your calculator because this whole thing needs to be underneath the square root. Then we calculate the confidence interval. We take our 2.5% and we subtract it and we add it to our point estimate p hat of 92%, and here's our confidence interval. With this, we can say <clears throat> with 95% confidence that we believe the population proportion is somewhere between 0.895 and 0.945. Now, here's a question just to pose at you. What would change to my confidence interval if I changed uh, my confidence level to 90% instead of 95. Would it make it wider? Would it make it smaller? Uh, would I get a more accurate uh, interval that's honed in more on where that population proportion is, or would I get a wider interval? Mathematically, you can see that replacing Z with a, uh, the critical value for 90% would change this to a 1.645, which would be a smaller number. Then that smaller number would get multiplied by the result of the square root, and that would in turn, of course, give us a smaller margin of error. Um, it's interesting because we tend to think of confidence level means that we're really confident that we're honing in, so we would get a smaller interval than approximating uh, my value better. <coughs> And the answer is actually just the opposite. The higher the confidence level, the higher our margin of error is. Because with an increased confidence level, uh, we get a bigger Z value. Um, the idea here with the confidence, it's, it's how confident we are that we're going to capture that population value. For example, I could say uh, I'm 100% confident that on the next exam, your scores are going to fall between 0 and 100%. Well, yeah, I can have 100% confidence because I've made the interval so wide, of course it's going to capture the thing, right? So sometimes what we do is we sacrifice confidence for precision, meaning with a lower level of confidence, we actually get a smaller margin of error, uh, which allows us to get a smaller confidence interval which is, we hope, honing in on that population value, that elusive population value that we don't know. The other way to, uh, there is another way, however, to get a smaller margin of error and to still keep a high level of confidence. Looking back at our formula, the uh, denominator is our key here. Every time we increase n, it's going to divide this by a larger number, which will result in a smaller square root multiplied by the same z value. And so there's two ways we can do to shorten our confidence level. Uh, we can either, I'm sorry, to uh, shorten our confidence interval. We can either lower our confidence level, which lowers the number out here, or we can increase our sample size, which is here. With the 90%, you can see that we actually get a value, a confidence interval of 0.899, 
instead of 0.895 and 0.941. We're not as confident that it contains the population per other, but it's more accurate in terms of predicting the population number. Another thing that we've talked about is finding minimal sample size, which we know is of course important if we're trying to do a study uh, before we do anything, we want to figure out how many people should I be talking to. As with estimating population means, it's often valuable to know the fewest values needed in a sample for a certain level of confidence. Of course, this is true, and um, if you think about it in terms of real world restrictions, uh, the more people we talk to, the longer it's going to take and the more expensive it's going to be. So as much as we can, we want to get the largest number of people possible without talking to more people than we needed to. It turns out that N and E are inversely connected. Here's the formula that we use if we're trying to estimate a uh, sample size trying to gauge what kind of sample we need to talk to to measure a population proportion. We take p hat, we multiply it by its confident, uh, its uh, complement, sorry, I don't know why I couldn't think of that word, p hat times its complement multiplied by the critical value divided by the margin of error. And of course, since we're measuring a population proportion, this error should always be in decimal form, not percent form. And then we square that. Now, what's awkward about this formula is, well, number one, we're trying to calculate M, this level of confidence over this margin of error. This is the last part that's awkward. And the reason why it's awkward is if you think about the process of the study, we have not found P hat yet, right? We are trying to do a study and we're trying to figure out how many people we should talk to so we can estimate p hat, find our point estimate, p hat, so we haven't found it yet. And that causes a bit of a problem in this formula. Um, of course, once we get our results, we're always going to round up. But here's what we do in this case where we don't know p hat. In the case where p hat is completely unknown, which would be in most studies, we use an estimated value of 0.5. Now it is possible that we may have a pretty good idea of what p hat is. Um, and if we think we do know, or we have a good estimate of it, we can use that as a value in there. Maybe we know it from previous studies, or maybe we just have an idea. Uh, for example, maybe you know we know that the population of women is somewhere around 50%. Uh, in a university, it may be a little bit higher than that, so we may go with 60%. Now, why would we do that and not just go with 50%? Here's the problem. Uh, the default for p hat is 0.5 if we don't have an estimate of p hat from previous studies. Why do we do that? Because it will always result in the largest possible sample that we would need for a given margin of error and given level of confidence. Here's why. Let's say we just use 0.5 as our estimate for p hat here. That would give us 0.5 times its complement, which is also 0.5. That gives us 0.25. Let's say instead we think that the population value really is not 50, but it's more like 60. So if we use 60 as my estimate for p hat, we get 0.6 times 0.4, which results in a lesser product, 0.24. If we think 70 is the number, 0.7 times 0.3 is 0.21. Again, smaller value. 0.8 times 0.2, its complement, gives us 0.16. And 0.9 times 0.1 gives us 9. You'll notice that as we stray away from uh, 0.5, uh, we end up getting lesser and lesser products. The product is what's going to be the number out here which is eventually going to get multiplied by whatever comes out of here. So the larger this is, uh, the larger our result is going to be. So 0.5 is our default because it produces the largest possible product that we're ever going to get by multiplying a percentage times its complement.
Let's look at an example. What is the minimum sample size needed for a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion if p hat, we believe, is 0.64 and our margin of error is 1.5%? So in this case, we have an idea of what p hat is. Um, and so we're going to use that. Had we not been given this number, we would just default back to 0.5. But since we have an idea of p hat, we're going to use it because it's going to mean that we're going to have to talk to fewer people, which is always good. 0.64 times 0.36, 1.96 is my estimated z value. And the margin of error, notice that when I plug this in, I put it as a decimal 0.015 instead of 1.5. You never plug a percent into an equation. You always want to turn that into a decimal. Multiplying these out, and if you try that on your own calculators, you should get 39, 33.798. Because we're dealing with a sample, we're always going to round this number up to one more person. And so in this case, we would need to get a sample of 3,964. All right, so here's some uh, problems for you to work. The state education administrator wants to estimate the fraction of 10th graders who read at or below the eighth grade level. The administrator believes the portion to be around 0.21. Question one, how large of a sample would be required to estimate the fraction of all 10th graders who read at or below the 8th grade level with an 85% level of confidence and an error of at most 0.03, which is 3%. See if you can calculate the sample size that we would need in this case. Notice that the administrator already has an idea of what p hat is. So we're going to use this as our estimate of p hat instead of 0.5. Answer here, and the answer here is 383. Notice that we always round up no matter what decimal we get, because that just means one more person in our sample. The second part construct a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion of 10th graders reading at or below the 8th grade level. Answer is 0.18 all the way up to 0.24. So our administrator estimates uh, that it's somewhere between 18 and 24 percent. This concludes uh, this session on confidence intervals for proportions.